What's up, guys? This is Codes. Matthew Anthony here. Hey, guys. Anamar here. Hi, my name's Golf. Mac Vaughn here. My name's Winter. Dom Kane. Bjorn Akerson. Julian Gray. Christian Benz. The Secrets. If you ask. Protoculture. Alvin Gad. Austin Hot. Hi folks and welcome along to Sonic Academy Live number 11 is it Chris? Number 11 yeah. we've made it this far. Yeah. Can't believe, I'm genuinely surprised that we got past like <laughs> six or seven. Yes normally we, we give up things after a couple of weeks. Um, yeah no so how have you been Chris? I, I've been really good. Uh, it's a bit of a yeah I think it's I it's, it's getting to me to be to be quite frank with you it, it's you know and we haven't had to change much in our, our lives and our routine yeah. because we work from home and, you know, we have our own studios. We we remotely work anyway. But, geez, it is, it's getting hard. So I can't imagine yeah. what it's like for, for people out there. What do you think? Agreed, yeah. I mean, I, I sort of, you know, when it all sort of, the lockdown happened, I was just like, yeah, this is going to be no problem. I just do the same thing. But, yeah, I'm, I am starting to struggle a bit. I think just... <laughs> Yeah, I've just been, I, I, I probably haven't been looking after myself the way I would normally, you know, in terms of going to bed on time and stuff. I've sort of been staying up a bit later and, and stuff like that. So it's probably yeah. not a good idea. I was just playing Xbox. I don't know. I don't know why it's, you know, it's maybe just because of the board. I don't know. I don't know why. It is tricky. It's, it's, uh, there's somebody saying, uh, Chris, you look younger. I was, I was just thinking earlier on that, you know, in previous weeks when I would go down to your studio, yeah. I would get jealous of like your synths, your lovely studio and yeah. your, your toys. And this week, I'm pretty sure you're just simply jealous of my haircut. Yeah. Did you get a haircut? Yeah. I got a, I got oh, a haircut. Mate. Just I didn't today. I a haircut. Before the Transwax uh, interview, I went inside. I, I'm thankfully. Uh, uh, I, I just got mine like waxed, gel waxed back just to try and keep <laughs> it out of the way because it, it just looks absolutely ridiculous otherwise. I, just, I really, I just love it. Like a wee. So are we hair does it just do like zzz, are we fade up the side yeah, just I'm sure there. there's I'm sure there's millions of people out there but yeah. I, look thankfully I was able to get one and a, a brilliant job she did and I thank her so much thank you Vicky uh, but yeah look it is uh, we wanted to have a chat with guys out there saying you know it is getting really hard it's getting tough everyone's getting into these sort of weird routines where we're binge watching stupid shows and eating crisps and drinking yeah. I haven't I mean, I haven't stopped drinking in a month. You know, it's it's. I'm not too t- bad. I never, I never sort of really drunk that much at home. Anyway, it was mostly out in the pubs. I'm sort of a binge drinker, so I don't drink often because when I do it, it normally <laughs> goes really, really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I did. We did have a few drinks the other night, and I did get far too drunk, and then have the worst hangover in the universe. So yeah. I- tend to I, I can't really have three beers i have three beers and then i'll open a bottle of rum and then i'm like you know on the rum and then then you're you're ready to go after yeah. three I, I, but yeah i'm the opposite i i have three and i start going downhill and want to go to sleep so, so i think that's because you drink red wine don't you so i think red wine yeah. sort of kind of makes you sleepy or i think rum rum like a rum and ginger rum and coke you're like yeah let's go <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah look if you're if you're out there and you have t- loads of time in your hands and you're beating yourself up because it's not going the way you want, I think I pro- I don't know whether you would see it. I noticed loads of posts three weeks ago going, yeah, in the lockdown, in the lab, working away, crushing it and, you know, nailing yeah. it. I'm not seeing those posts anymore. So I think everyone is exactly the same. If you look at Zed, uh, for some reason, he's just constantly posting pictures of his food so his lunch <laughs> his dinner it's like yeah i mean food, you... it is funny because i don't want to i don't want to talk about the whole thing for too long because i know people just want something to get away from but yeah yeah 
Yeah, just like trying to get food is like a whole, you know, different exercise now. We're like trying to find people who deliver and like where do you get it? And like you get something like new, like we're getting meat, we're getting a butcher delivery on Saturday and it's like the most exciting thing in the world. <laughs> okay. And you do like, a, you appreciate everything. We're like, we've been cooking all our meals at home, you know, because we just don't have the luxury of, we haven't really been getting takeaways and stuff. So, <clears throat> um, yeah. So, but, so guys, I, if you're on the chat, just, you know, I uh, see loads of people saying lucky from working from home. John Sloan works from home. Uh, do you want to just give a shout out to those people that are on the chat, uh, Phil? We've got Mark Anthony, we've got John Sloan, Lost Rhythm, we've got Dan Jan. How you doing, Mr. Dan Jan? We've got Toby Pierce, uh, Bogoslaw Porridge, we've got Mars Technique, uh, Seven of Clubs, Cosmic Cat. Hi, Cosmic Cat. We will come into your track in a bit. Uh, Dennis Van der Meer. Uh, so, look, guys, welcome along. I uh, hope it's all uh, going well for everybody. Alexei Cherbny, Toby Pierce, hello. Uh, so, yeah. It is, whilst we do work at home, we do work remotely, I probably this week. I don't do you know, know, it's just... Do you know what I would say, Chris? I think the thing I'm... Like, especially for these live shows, is just having you down here and just, you know... It's like human having, interaction, yeah, isn't it? it is human interaction. I mean, I've, I have play Xbox a lot, and you do get that social aspect on it, but, like, sitting in a room with your mate and just having a beer or something, I would just... I would, like, pay anything for it right now, Do you it, know what I mean? Go out with a few buds. If you want a real prime example of this, if you live in the UK, go on to BBC iPlayer and go and watch the last Graham Norton uh, show. He's doing it like us, remotely, with yeah. remote guests. I mean, our produ- to be honest, our production techniques look better than his. Uh, but it's 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 tr- dreadful because it's him sitting, obviously, at home yeah. and chatting to people via Skype. And it's just like, it's weird. Yeah, it's, it's just so weird. So, uh, guys, uh, welcome along. Uh, we are going tonight to announce the winner of the Jerome Ismay competition. So uh, stay tuned for that. We had an incredible response. I think there was nearly 60 submissions. Jerome went through them all over the weekend and was very quickly to get back to me. Uh, sorry to those that didn't make the competition. We had a few that missed the deadlines. Uh, we couldn't get them in. So uh, thank you to everyone that entered. And I hope you're all on here waiting to find out who uh, wins. And we've got a special. I've got a little special announcement uh, for that that even Philip doesn't know. Ooh. So, uh, what could so, it be? I don't know what it could be. Uh, so, yeah. That's that's it. Uh, show eleven. Somebody said at the top of the chat we should be talking about Ableton eleven. I know. How long has it been? Ableton ten's not that old, is it? Oh, it's sort of totally. It's only like twelve months old. Yeah, we're on. Uh, I'm I'm on the beta thing. I think it's up to like I think we're going for ten point two soon. Yeah, but I mean, like Logic hasn't had a, a decent update in a long, long time. Yeah. So yeah. I think. Uh, so what would you like to see in Ableton eleven, Phil? Um, vocal comping, which I think I've talked about before. Yeah. Um, maybe some better built-in metering. Maybe some LFU metering built in. Yeah. Which do you not? Is there not, none of that in Ableton as yet? Um, no, they've got. I don't think so. No, You've no just, value. It's just you know, RMS and a peak. Right. Okay. So metering. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, what else? And pl- what you were talking about uh, the. Re- you know, recording v- That's right, yeah. Yep. So I've always had a, a slight problem in Ableton that when I'm recording vocals, I'm just never, they never feel that tight to me. Yeah. So I went and did uh, a bit of an experiment um, with, I'll just switch over here. If you see here, you've got your input latency, output latency, and then your error compensation. Yep. So I played a click. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then recorded it with my mic, and then you can see where uh, where it lands on the on the beat. Yep. Okay. So you can see if you're ahead or if you're behind the beat, and it should be bang on the beat. And when I started moving the driver error compensation about, um, I just couldn't get it. It was either always jumping too far or jumping too back. There was no like seemed seemed to be fine control. It seemed to be when you get close to it, it'll like mm-hmm. either just bounce away. So. I would really like them to fix that, please. And the other thing uh, somebody mentioned there, and it probably is a good idea, you would like, would you like to, the ability to rearrange windows? Yes, we talked about that so, before, didn't we? Yeah. So you could have a workspace, you could have maybe the things maybe you talked about on the left, you want over in the right, and uh, that would, could, could be kind of interesting. Yeah. What about you, Chris? <laughs> Uh, not being in, in Ableton user, I have very little to add. Um, well, look, tell you, look, I I think Ableton is actually leading the way. Uh, yeah. Uh, with de- genuinely, it's it's much more innovative. It's much more forward thinking than Logic, and uh, it's kind of every time I see you using it, I do get jealous. Going, 
just that's it just seems so much quicker and just seems so much easier and less hassle i actually love love the plug-in you know the way the, the compressor and all this there's, there's just yeah. no f- i would be no interested fluff. actually to ask our users that use ableton um how frequently it crashes for them because i'm getting quite a lot of crashes but i don't know whether that's because you know i've got oh, sort of quite really? a lot of alpha um stuff software going on, on it, or yeah, yeah, whether yeah. it is just um super crashy at the minute but yeah i well to be honest logic is uh pretty stable mm. and the, the weird thing is if it crashes it absolutely reloads in the last state you left it so it's I, yeah. crash is simply just restart and you're back to where you were uh so uh most people uh sorry i use mixcraft pro studio 9 I've, I've, what I've, never even, I've never even heard of that sam sam said you crazy cat uh mark anthony uses roland is roland a, a door i don't know studio one uh ableton after switching from logic that's nathan nathan how did you find the switch it was a good i worked with ableton uh I think yeah, for collabs and stuff, uh, is it is Ableton better for collabs than Logic, or does it I, really matter? I don't know. Well, uh, I mean, you've got the collect all and save, which works well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, John Sloan was saying there, if he leaves, it, leaves his on overnight, it crashes. That's exactly what's happening to me. I'll come back in the morning and it'll be crashed. Do, look, Logic does that and has done for ten mm. years. If you leave Logic overnight and come back into hit play, so it's all just sort of stuck and you have to so that is uh, something i've lived with uh, for all my life and nobody yeah. seems to want to fix it uh, i'm having huge huge audio issues at the moment i have no idea what's going on uh, i'm seriously considering a clean install but i can't i just can't face it <laughs> to be really honest yeah i know i am um, uh i have tried to build um the catalina builds for hackintosh yes and uh, I can't get it to boot. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been doing that over the last couple of weeks, just trying to get even a boot, and I can't. I can't do it. And there's a, there's a whole other system now you can use that's not. There's like basically the bootloader was originally Clover, and it's still easy. There's still a Clover bootloader, loader, but there's like a whole new system for Hackintosh. But I really don't. I just don't know. I, I I'm like on. to move, but you're saying it's really annoying anyway. Like with... it's, it's, I'm on Catalina, and the, when you're installing stuff, it will ask you. Do you give permission to for this program to look at this folder? Do you give it permission to do this? Do you give it permission to look at your screen? And you're you know you're constantly going yes yes yes. And I, I understand it's brilliantly secure and it's letting you exactly you know what the program's accessing and stuff. And you can really tailor what programs can see and not do, like Google and stuff like that. But mm. it's a pain. It really is. Uh, Nathan, who switched from Logic to Ableton says my productivity increased and my old Mac copes better with it. So your old Mac copes better with Ableton than Logic. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, well, I think Ableton's quite a, a light program. You know, I can definitely get quite a lot of stuff going. Um, yes. Probably compared to Cubis, I would say. Maybe. Uh, Mr. Ajeka is in the chat. Uh, we do have uh, a, an interview with uh, Mr. Ajeka, who is also Transwax, coming up. Uh, I spoke to him earlier on today. Uh, and we're, We've done a, a cut-down version of the interview for the show and we'll also upload the full 30 minute interview uh, to the YouTube channel later on so you can get a, a shifty at that but he's in the chat if you want to ask him we'll play the interview uh, earlier on the show and then you you guys can post questions and he'll be there to really bug him because he's he's playing the print works with like Sasha and Digweed and stuff or the Warehouse Project at the moment well he was until everything shut down so uh, a guy is he's definitely man at the moment uh, and you can pick his head he's uh, really pick really his head. Pick, pick his brains pick his brains <laughs> pick his head pick we go to that now Chris do you, want to, do you want to run the interview now should we go for it now or why don't we do Demo Doctor and then that I think we should go for the interview now okay fine yeah. let's run the interview All so right. guys here is the interview Thank you so much, uh, Gary, for joining us today on Sonic Academy. Uh, it's a real pleasure to have you on the show. I know you're uh, on the chat some weeks when you can get in this lockdown. So uh, yeah, let's, for those that don't really know, you go under the name Ejeka and you go under Transwax. Uh, Ejeka started first. How did it How did it all start for you? Well, well it was, I suppose I've had Ejeka now about, what, eight years probably, something like that. I had a few things before that. I've done a lot of music in school. I went to university, sold my turntables and the kit. Sort of took it up again a bit more seriously when I was about, what, 22? Uh-huh. 
I kind of was just making tunes and then SoundCloud, as you know, was quite a big thing. It still is, but the Bicep fellas heard a few tracks. I already knew them, but mm-hmm. they put a few on their blog, which was very popular at the time. And then I got signed up to Tusk Wax, which is a label that's done quite well, you know, like an underground final only release type thing. Mm-hmm. Got Bicep on a remix for that. And it's they sort of, we both sort of grew from about seven, eight years ago up. So I just been keeping keeping that going since really i think um it was a pete tong picked it up quite early which was good getting the radio play yeah. quite important with all that blogs at seven eight years ago and soundcloud were very very important in those days weren't they it was quite organic coming from that because it used to be you know they, people used to have an opinion as opposed to just seeing what was there on the like itunes or beatport people used to extract the best bits and you got they get you know, like a short list of a certain type of genre or something. So, and if you used to build a story around it, I think the bicep lads focused, focused a lot on the artwork. Mm-hmm. You then moved kind of, I don't know, three or four years ago from, you started doing this new uh, guys, uh, Transwax. And, and what was the catalyst to get to move from the Ejecta, which is very much cool, very much in the bicep y print works, London, very cool scene. Yeah. What, yeah. Was the, what, what was the catalyst to move into this sort of re energizing trance records? Well, I was always I played played a good bit in Ireland and UK, and you used to be able to play a trance track near the end. You know, slowed down a bit. You used to cross over doing that, and then I realised I was starting to play like half my set was trance tunes, uh-huh. and I was like, right, wait a minute, maybe I could just get away with doing a full set of this. So I think that was it. I was trying to maybe get a DJ tool initially for me to play, and I found if you put a breaks over it it's sort of it's a bit more organic when you slowed it down whereas you just kept the four on the floor it lost a lot of energy so for some reason jungle type breaks something a bit groovy like that with straight melodies seems to really still keep the essence of the original so i think that was the idea what tempo do you work at when you're doing a trans wax a trans wax uh, track what what is the tempo you start at well, the key to it is breaking it down. Right. There's a lot of tools out there now, so you know how to break it down into its bits, so you can build it back up again, um, and then add bits as well. Sometimes the production wasn't the best in the tracks in the day. Mm-hmm. The, the melody was great, but for club systems now, especially the kick and the bass, they really do need the thump to stand up to the current tracks. I, I would always listen to the original, break it down from there, and then look online for tools like. MIDI files or acapellas mm-hmm. and then work back. Have you been surprised by the reaction? Like, I mean, I, I one mix that I have loved over the last few months is uh, Sasha's uh, Clash mix. Have you been surprised by the, the breadth of, of the DJs playing it? Yeah, the, it is a bit mad. There's, I don't know, there's a certain snobbery with music where people think stuff's a bit... Like, Trance got a really bad name there for about a decade, maybe because of the EDM. Sway, but, we, but a we, lot we of talked about big me. DJs are playing it now, like Adam Bear, and Nina Kravitz, the, the people that would never have went there five years ago. I think Nina Kravitz has really trendset it a good bit because she put the cool back into it. Who? I mean, how um, do you feel about that? Do you? I mean, do you find that it's DJ, you know, techno DJs, ironically playing the party trans tune at the end of the set, <laughs> or? Uh, you kind of just go with the flow and go, yeah, look, they're probably, it's had some influence on them at, at some stage in their careers and it's it's actually... I think, I think they all liked it. It's it's one of them. You just couldn't mention it for a while. Okay. So, Well, Gary, listen, thank you so much for giving us uh, an insight into your uh, world. I'm uh, genuinely, utterly fascinated by how you've kind of created this whole world yourself and everyone from Sasha to Digweed to Above and Beyond or, you know, James Grant and all and... Uh, or and even fairy and stuff are 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 really really caught up in this. So, what what's the plans for the next twelve months? Yeah, well, and Juna singles like six weeks. So that's the first single of the album. And is it, and the is album it coming out on deep or beats? Uh, beats. beats. Okay, interesting. So the, I sort of their main type. The chance thing I'm trying to get everyone involved in it a bit. Okay. Um, and then a few collaborations, hopefully with yourself. Yes. Um, one with Perry. One, like if I'm trying to do a trans wax versus thing yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. So the album, the idea is to have the album, do a few more of the white label 
bootleg things and then have like a versus series where it's brand new music you know so I'm trying to come out of the whole nostalgic looking back and look, now trying to look forward a bit trying to build the story that way brilliant brilliant you know what I mean brilliant listen thank you Guy for joining us at Sonic Academy I know you're in cheers the... keep up the good work thank you and you're in the chats uh, you'll be in the chat we're going to play this out tonight and you're in the chat and hopefully anybody that's got any questions please ask uh, away and Gary will try and answer them this evening on the chat so thank you very much for joining us and it's yep. back to Phil there you go there we go hey well uh a brilliant interview. Uh, that was highly edited uh, by me very quickly today, so it was a bit of a jump cut. So I want to thank uh, Ejeka Gary uh, for taking time out of his uh, busy lockdown schedule today to uh, chat with me and uh, do that for us. It's definitely giving me vibes of, you know, whipping out the old trance riffs. Well, he sent me the opening to his album today. Yeah. And it is nice. bliss. It is absolutely what a th sublime is what I wrote back to him. I just thought it was amazing. It just very nice, it very nice. Yeah, nailed it. A few it. things he's been working on. We're sort of trying to work on stuff, but yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, he's he's doing a he's trying to do a collabs album with the likes of me, Phil, where he's really scraping the bottom of the barrel, and then he, <laughs> he, he, he goes up the yeah. chain to Ferry, Paul Van Dyke, uh, trying to get those guys on. So uh, I think a really cool, interesting project. We're gonna have to do uh, our own to trans do. track, Chris. Oh, yeah, I am trying. I'm really am trying. I, I have, I've downloaded my old uh, rolling gear and whipped out the old logic and tried to do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've totally forgotten how to make music though. Yeah, it's, it's a sad situation. So, uh, Phil, will we jump over to some demos? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So Two, first up, one. We've got Paula Burroughs. Nobody works. Is this this is Cosmic Cat, isn't it? Yes. So we didn't get to this last week. Uh, we're getting to it now. Cosmic Cat, you're in the chat. Welcome along. Thank you for submitting your track. And let's have a listen. How's that kick working for you? Um, a bit. Uh, maybe a bit woolly. A bit woolly. Is... Just gonna see if this works. Drop on console one on there so we get a wee theater. Although I think oh, yeah. kick, kick sort of works in the context of the rest you know of the track. You know it's good. Groove of that, that vocal against the drums. Yeah. This is great track, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I really it? like I like the, the the choppy arrangement. I think that's something yeah. that's more. Huh. Being more track to listen to. <laughs> and it works with that housey sort of thing, doesn't it? That real, you know, juxtaposition. I'll, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the kick could cut through it a bit more if it was maybe just um, have as much decay on it. You could sort of tighten it up. I like this. Clever. Is that bass over par in the kick for you? Yeah. But I really like the change there. I think that really worked well. Yeah, it worked really well. The maybe just uh, be maybe more subtle side chain in. Right. Um. And nobody works. Yeah, look, this is. I think this is really, really good. I think it's kind of contemporary. Yeah. 
loads of good ideas. Pretty yeah, well it's super retro vibe, but I think yeah. that you know it sounds really uh, legitimate. I would say. Yeah, so, um, the sidechain thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, you can either go, like, uh, with a retro track like that, I don't think a lot of people were using a lot of sidechain back in, in the day. In the day. No, um, no. But one thing you can sort of, you can do, especially if you're enabled and it's quite easy, uh, that, and it's more a, a technical thing than a sound thing, is sometimes when you get the kick and the bass together you do get that extra like whoomph that can sort of distort things a bit if they're mm -hmm. landing on the same note so instead of using a side chain you can use side chain into a high pass filter yep yep and so when the kick hits it'll just slightly get off the bottom end of the bass so you don't lose it doesn't sound side chained but yep. it just creates a bit more space for the bass so yep. and it, so you would probably get the kick just coming through a bit more full and it wouldn't be sort of muffled as such because you can hear whatever sort of mix bus compressors on there you know it's sort of um bringing them both back i, I would imagine so i think yeah i think everything's brilliant except i think the kick is just letting it down a little bit and i think the kit is just a bit blue woolly and it's honky and maybe i would just swap the kick out as well and get something to cut through yeah punch through. i mean and uh, we talk. did in our, I think it was our 909 day giveaway, 808 day giveaway. Yeah. We did a whole bunch of 909 kicks um, and we did sort of some crossover. We did a whole bunch. Did we did we give all those away, didn't we? Because I have a whole whole ton of... 909s somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Let me just check. I don't know if they're still available, are they? Um, let's just check what... So... Do you see 909 day giveaway? Yeah, they're the all there. Yeah. Do we have them on the site, Brian? Do we still have I, those available? I'm sure they'll be available somewhere. Don't, I think we, yeah, we ran them for 909 day just as a free. So, uh, yeah. So there we go. I really like that track. Very really good. Singer. And uh, listen, lovely to have some female representation on as well. Cosmic Cat, thank you very much for submitting. Uh, Seven of Clubs, uh, you're saying that we said last week we'd play your track this week. Sorry, we didn't get to it. We will maybe. What, what track? What was the. I don't. If he tells us what the track is, we'll maybe try and go into the the filing system and find it, and maybe do a quick run through. Sorry if that's what we said. So, uh, so what's next, Phil? Um, this is. Let me just go. Yeah, this is Van Stork. It's the Van Stork, who's sometimes on the chats. Van Stork, if you're there, please give us a shout and say hello. So Brian's saying, Phil, that those Nano 9s are included with the Kick 2 installer. So oh, hopefully, there, go. Go, there you go. Hopefully, you get some nice, cool uh, free Nano 9s there. <clears throat> Quite a similar start to the, yeah. to the previous track, isn't it? With the, the kick and the vocal sort of delay. It is nice to get something in that's not melodic techno progressive house. <laughs> yeah. Would you have had more of a build up there to that? Like a more uh, risery sort of thing, is it? Mm. Yeah, maybe like a drum fill or some sort of stop. Uh, do, do you know what it is? I think the way the hat and the bass come in together for me. I like that. I like, that. like that. I like the hats being a bit off. Okay. Hmm. Losing that sort of momentum a bit. Totally just, yeah, that fade of the, the vocal is just... I like the vocal coming in here. Yeah.
Yeah, I'm glad it didn't go back to that original bass line. I'm wondering if, if that was necessary at all. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm liking the more interesting arrangements so far this evening. Sort of lots of cuts and chops and yeah, like, yeah. Both sounded sound really really clubby. really cool isn't it yeah it's a i mean sound design wise it's really polished it's really yeah, really polished really good i was i was thinking that actually one of the users emailed in um asking us to do uh a technique that was in um an oxia track i think domino uh -huh. and also in a um, christian smith track and it's that that classic sort of dub delay thing where you sort of you're you're you ride the feedback to sort of you know get the the you Just know double a thing going on yeah yeah um, distortion and i think that would sit really well in that sort of style of track and that sort of breakdown and stuff yeah and also i, I would automate some delays and, and throws and reverb throws but yeah Thing. I think it sounds like a mashup. Oh, okay. All right. This is the only bit that. Um, that weird, but we can just mind find it. Yeah. I mean, it feels like something solid clubby track. I would it's something you would hear Danny Hard maybe dropping on us, you know, the yeah. early Saturday night on Radio One. It's kind of got that housey, poppy, really polished. Uh, yeah. Mix wise, yeah. what do you think? I really like the mix. I really thought the mix was good. Yeah, I know. I would but... brighten brighten the hats, but then that's just my problem. It's <laughs> because you're going deaf. I, bright, bright, I think you know, that's maybe what it is. You're maybe, going deaf? Maybe my frequency range has just gone down so much that I'm always brightening the hats. And everyone's listening going, jeez. Yeah, turn your hats down, man. <laughs> oh, old man. So, uh, yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much uh, for sending that in. Uh, great track. Von Stark is usually on the chat, not not here tonight. Got, uh, Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony. Let's see. You ready? Ready. Ready for this one? Go. I'm worried already that there's not very much, like a big massive chunk of yeah. There's there's no break form there. Yeah. Okay. Mark Anthony's on the chat. Well, thank you very much for sending your. It's a brave thing to do to send your tracks in here. I think it actually absolutely is. Yeah. You know, for, for especially for... send it to two grumpy old men <laughs> picking <it> apart. <laughs> yeah. Good. Kick heavy enough for you? Come through enough? Not punchy. It's it's again. It feels a bit woolly. Yeah. We're we're desperately trying to get seven of clubs track here sorted out. Nothing in the sub. Right. Let's look at the spectrum. There is stuff there. 
That kick, yeah, again, the kick, just a bit nothingness. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, a, I mean, I like the vibe of the track. What what style would you, I, I'm, I'm sitting here going, what is it? Is it housey as well? Housey, just sort of like techie house. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, that Mark Technic says groovy. I would agree. It's a very groovy track. You, you can yeah. get a vibe off it, but I just would want more that kick to cut through. Oh. That's really nice. Yeah. Very hooky. Where's the vocal from, Mark? Love that vocal. Yeah. Jekka loves the vocal. Get the man on it. Yeah. Remix. Remix. <laughs> Free vocal that had to be rebuilt. Some. Yeah, the vocal really carries it along. Yeah. I still think that you know there needs to be more. Totally here, yeah. you know, it's, just... it's, it's like 70% of the way there, the backing track, it's just not quite, it needs to move on. I find it, the percussion all a bit sort of clattery, if that's, you know, does that make sense? Um, I think if you had a solid kick, just to help it all, to, you know, to, to help it, then I think there, there's something... There's like I a like flat that, like You like that okay, right, friend? It's almost like tablets. It sort of fits in with the yeah. sort of slightly Indian y vocally vibes. I like it. Where's this vocal from? I don't know. It's amazing. Every, everyone needs to jump yeah. on this. Where is the book of Rob? You must tell he's, us. He's not telling he's us. Not telling he doesn't want anyone else to nick it. <laughs> I do like the, the wee piano theme here. Because it's kind of... Yeah. It's a bit... Uh, I mean, it just... Do you know what it, I think this really shows you is how much mileage you can get out of having a good vocal. You know, yeah. because that t the backing track really hasn't done much, you know, for yeah. the last three minutes. But you're hooked in. You're, you know, you're still listening. You're still like zoned in because that vocal's just really carrying it along. All right. Yeah. No. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. You told the vocal is 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 brilliant, and your wee piano, the kind of off kilter piano, that actually creates a nice vibe for the vocal, and it's all a bit sort of sour and a bit slightly dark, but funky and cool. Yeah. And yeah, I really, really, I just... really like it. Get that kick up a bit. Yeah. A bit uh, so just signed up for a year with you guys and going through PLAS beginner course. Brilliant. If this, I mean, if you're Mark, your if you're first track, <laughs> nailed yeah. it. Uh, yeah, PLASK is actually he's the king of doing these sort of housey things. He's the king of he's he's an Ableton certified trainer. The guy is brilliant. So uh, if anybody else is on Ableton and wants to you know check out his stuff, please please. We've got a new course coming from him on. Let me get this correct. Corpus and Collision. Does that mean anything? Yes, here? they are Ableton instruments that yes. come with Ableton Suite. Yeah. So he's doing a how to use a Corpus and Collision course. Uh, so that's they are. Let me just check. Isn't it, are they? I think they are. Logic. <coughs> collision what? is Collision is Ableton and Corpus is that not Logic? No, no, no. He's no? he's uh, no. This is uh, maybe a Max for Live instrument. I don't. Don't ask me these things. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Pilas Lo-Fi course is brilliant. Pilas Greek, yeah, he's brilliant. Kenny D, you mentioned the word UMEC. UMEC. UMEC is currently recording a course for us. All right. I wonder will he try to pick up enough? Don't, don't tell anyone. Shh. Just keep it between me and you, right? Don't tell anyone. He's recording the course. It may not land. <laughs> 
So, when did we start recording? A year ago? <coughs> he did record. He started recording a year. Actually, because I changed it on our system and it was due this time last year. But yeah. he, I did get a a video from him today to check. He's a lunatic. I'm just going to put that out there. He's a lunatic. And I've I'm seen not... him play quite a few times. I might have even played with him in Shine before. I sure, love I'm him. sure I've been on the bill with him in Shine. I talked to him on, on uh, Facebook. He's brilliant. I, I love him. Uh, but he's, I think it's, it's just, it could go either way. It could be completely shambolic or completely brilliant. So just, yeah, just prepare yourself. I think no matter what, what way the course goes, you're going to definitely learn something. He's a techno totally. god. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like he was, you know, for a long time, he was, you know, the, the dawn of techno for. And he still, to this day, sits a big port number ones consistently. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really been, been chasing you, Mac, for a long, long time. Uh, finally. Finally got, finally else, got other, him. Any other secret courses? Uh, I'll not reveal until they're actually started recording. So Enamor's going to do a new course for us. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Has he figured out what he's going to do, Dom? I think he's going to do tech tips. Uh, JTech has just delivered another 10 tech tips to us. So I'm really excited because they're always brilliant. JTech doesn't do normal tech tips. He does. It goes in the whole, whole psychology of how to make a, a riff. 25% better and stuff like that. So, awesome. uh, so yeah, uh, an armor course. And um, we're working on some really key, uh, key courses at the moment. So hopefully, and fingers crossed, it's it is a bit slower than I'd like, but we're, we're going to get some really cool stuff to land uh, very very soon. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the next? There's a track. If you go to Slack, Mister Johnson, uh, right. there's, uh, we have a track that you can be downloading in the background while. Okay, uh, seven of clubs. Let's do yeah. this. Um, okay. You download that while I'm playing the other one off okay. screen. Sure. So who's this from, dude? This is uh, Alex Muller. Okay. Has his, his artist name is Caruso. Caruso. Nero's voice. Nero's voice. We just we butcher everybody's name each week. <laughs> To see the dots, the three dots. Where are the dots? Yep, yeah, right hand side, very last icon. Oh, yeah. Like that. Oh, okay. okay. Switch the screen, Philip. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, the screen just looks like my desktop. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're working on getting a track in. Oh, someone's done it already. Okay, there you go. Yes. And we, we had a listen to this track earlier on today and both agreed that it was like it's it's really on the money. There wasn't loads to say about it, was there? Uh just really like the vibe of it. Yeah, that I mean that you know. I get a good a good amount of content in it. Mm -hmm. Lots of different things happening. I like, you know, I don't think it's a coincidence that tracks that sound like they've had a lot of work put into them generally sound more interesting and better. Yeah. Hold on, let's switch the screen. There we go. There you go. Is that better? So Alex Muller, uh, if you're on the chat, say hello. This is brilliant. Oh. How does it? How's the low end sound in your gaff? Brilliant, really good. Right. I mean that shaker, great. Even that that sort of white noise burst there is just like it was so dry and so so they're brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, good use of reverb. The the, the sounds have enough reverb on them. Maybe maybe after eleven shows, people are going. I'll have a little bit more reverb on that. <laughs> reverb on that. Hey, Jack is saying we should start a label. Yeah. We, we say every week we should start a label. We should. We should. We just sign what a person every week. Send. We just. Do you know who we should get? Give this to Jerome Ismay. Say yeah. sign this. Oh, that's brilliant. Did you hear that change there? What was it? That's lovely. Right. 
over here. This is not drone base. Uh, oh, that's brilliant. Sounds like uh, Blade Runner. I love it. Do you think it should have developed a bit more with percussion? Would you have brought a clap in or just keep it like that rolling techno? No, just keep it rolling. That is brilliant. This is clever. This is really, really clever. It's right up your alley, isn't it? Totally. Do you know, and I've reached for the, the volume control to turn off the headphones because it's like, yeah. Oh. Deadly Custer oh. said it's a no-clap zone. He's right. The clap has been issued with the stay-at-home order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, there's no claps allowed. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice track, this. I'll give it a bit of welly. Go on, go on. See, it's 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 wanting you to give it welly. It's like, yeah. you know, play me loud here. Like, it's, it's, it's gone. The dynamics there. That's an interesting there. thing. If you, there's, you get a very different picture once... Whoa. You get a very different picture once you've played in a club at what the dynamics of a track can be. Yes. You know, and how it's really soft in a club, but still really loud. Yeah. And you can, you know, you can, you've got a lot more dynamics to play with than you think. The vocals. Oh, oh that piss. Oh. Sweet. Jeepers. Every week we're finding these absolute killer tracks, it's amazing. Jeez. Alex, you've got to jump on the chat here, mate. This is... This is amazing. Yeah, no skip zone, dude. Well done, yeah, we're not skipping, so this is... You do to change that, Chris. <laughs> I, I would. Well, the first thing I would do is change the name. Change the name to your own name. To my own name, <laughs> and then sign it. I, it's it yeah. does. Per, it's perfect. I suspect me. that um, Alex Miller has not sent this track in for 
us to give our opinions on it, but maybe more as a promotional exercise because I don't oh. think there's much <laughs> needs changing. No, uh, Alex, I wish you were on top because we would have been actually great for us and the users to pick your brains about how you came up with the track, how you pulled it apart. So look, maybe we'll get, we'll, I'll maybe ping you an email yeah, and we'll see drop if we an some... email and see if we can. Get some background info and maybe get a course. <laughs> We'd all like to see how that was done, you know. Uh, uh, last thing, seven clubs. Uh, good luck uh, with this because <laughs> I would not like to that. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry that we didn't play your track before that. So, look, everyone, uh, yeah, we. So, look, it was, it was, it, 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 sometimes you just get those tracks that are, we had one a couple of weeks ago. It was just insanely good. This is, is up there with it. So, Seven Club, what are your persistence? Uh, yeah. We didn't get to it last week. Let's get to it this week. Good start, good start. Yeah. Nice and solid. Yeah, we should uh, we should start asking people whether what they think the track's going to be like when they see the waveform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what genre is it? Yeah, <laughs> guess the guess the waveform. <laughs> it's good so far. Great kick, really, really, really good kick. Yeah, the kick in here could maybe use. 2 dB more of 50 or 60 maybe. <clears throat> okay. exceptionally high this week Chris should we have uh, a noob demo week next week and we'll not play any tracks that we think are like finished tracks but we'll just play tracks that we think need a lot of work and we'll yeah. I think that's really fair you know I think it's oh yeah oh yes I want to compare it to the, the previous track because that would be unfair, but um, some of those incidental sounds, you know, some of those top line spot effects and stuff are not in there. I mean, there is that wee sort of um, party thing going on. Some of those nice... Yeah. Like, yeah, this is dope, I really like it. Maybe the heart's a little bit loud. loud. Yeah. the 16th can be brought back and you can still keep the open one I think we need something big to happen here now What do you think of that sound? Um, if I'm honest, it's not doing it for me. It's, it's not cool. It's, it's, I think it's dragging the whole thing down a little bit. I would lose that part. Uh, seven of clubs. I'm not feeling uh, a build-up. There's much no. of a build-up as I would like to... Uh, 
maybe want to hear a chord change coming in here, a big you know, something like really epic. Maybe the idea is going for like, you know, that sort of, you know, maybe a bigger sort of bass in there. Just... more driving when it comes back it does it, i think the important section is the breakdown and it kind of just fell a little bit flat I would I would say this the start really had us it was sort of build bringing along and building up really nicely and that that bass line that dropped really work I, I think just from from the break on I think maybe just scrap that idea in the middle and go for something else don't you you would need to bring that bass line back surely so that's your that's your main that's section your, that's, that's the that's the bang of it yeah no, you need that thing, yeah, that sort that of uh, thing like And just yeah. maybe, uh, you know, another element there that's going to lift. Okay, cool. Let's Listen, guys, it. really, really high standard tonight. Uh, probably, as you said, a little bit too high. Um, yeah, I think we should. Should we, should we do like a, a proper noob demo? Because we do get, we get, we had loads of demos this week, but, and it's sort of, it's hard to, you don't want to put really, you know, you know, beginner stuff against sort of, you know, fully completed stuff i suppose so I, I don't know would you guys would you guys like to hear really early noob stuff that's that's kind of sometimes a l really off the mark and we could try and whip it into shape or would you just rather hear stuff that maybe is 60 percent, 70 percent the way there and, and just needs a little bit of uh guidance so i don't know i don't know whether yeah, you want i know because it, it is hard because when it, when it is such sort of when it is a bit of you know, all over the place, it's you, you don't want to be too negative because sometimes yeah. it's hard to pull a positive out and you don't want to destroy anybody's confidence either. Yeah, I mean, the other uh, thing so... I was thinking, because we did get so many demos in last week, we could maybe just do a quick half hour, not live, like track feedback session just for you, sort of... You, you threaten every week to do an off-air thing and never do it. I know. I know. <laughs> Can we get more uh, hours in the day, please? There were... Nearly 60 people entered uh, the Jerome Is My competition. Uh, would anybody like to know who won? I would. Would you like to know I who would, won? I would like to know if I can remember what. <laughs> what number? Put it in. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping. I know Synthwaves 2. Right, you sure? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're either going to watch who won the Jerome Is My competition <laughs> or, or you're going to see a Synthwave ad. So, uh, okay, I think it's this one. Can we talk over? Um, oh no, what? sorry, I've switched it. I've switched it back. I'm gonna have to play. I'm gonna. I can't do it live. Sorry. Here, <laughs> here you go again. Can you? You can't even read them out. Oh, do you want to talk? No. Is is there? Is it say stuff? No, it's just it plays the demos, the oh, tracks. Okay, here we go. Switch back. Yes. 
Hey, look, we are pro. <laughs> yeah. We do we do actually put to some be, to be fair, you're right. We were talk well, to be talking about at the start of this show about like the rubbish broadcast we've seen. I was watching Ant and Deck from their home like a couple of weeks ago. We we would normally watch, you know, Saturday night takeaway at home with the kids, like and yeah, they were yeah, doing yeah, it from yeah. their bedroom or from their house. And was it just as rubbish as us? No, that was that was pretty good quality. <laughs> it was pretty pro. Was like it? I watched Sky Sports and it's like Gary Neville and, and Cara at home. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you know, they're like sitting like over here and there's like one up here and then like the the audio's all over the place and you're just like <laughs> like we can do this, you're Sky Sports, can you just not like post them out of mic and a half decent camera and it, it and it does it, it does appear that we throw the show together about five minutes before we come oh, on air. We don't. <laughs> we did tonight. We we did kind of uh, uh, because obviously with Easter, I was I wasn't here on Monday or Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday, so. yeah, and we're also uh, Phil staying up to four o'clock in the morning <laughs> playing, playing Xbox. The Division Two. Yeah. Uh, he did do a shout out for people to join him on Xbox, and nobody joined him. These are all mean. <laughs> <laughs> I was semi drunk at that point, so. Yeah. You were semi drunk at the top of the show last week. Yeah, can we apologise for last week's show as well? Because uh, we did try and drink, and look, hence we're on the waters tonight. We thought it was a total disaster. Um, we apologise yeah, for wasting just, an hour and a half of your work. Lives. I just it turns out I can't work stuff if I'm even slightly drunk. So, uh, so what are we doing next, Phil? Come on. Well, tell me. just a quick, a wee quick tech tippy thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, because uh, one of the users emailed in. I don't think I can play the track, can I? Oxy, a domino. Go and listen to that. Don't listen to it now. <laughs> <laughs> Stay here. Stay here. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, what will we do? Oxy, a get... domino, I remember that. Was was that a, an Anjuna track? Was it, it was like a... Um, I don't know. It's a real sort of off kilter RP thing, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so I'll basically, I'll just get an RP synth line in. Um, this will be very oh. quick. Oh, while you're doing that, I forgot to say I had a little surprise announcement for the competition winners. Yeah, that's right. Jer- Jerome Ismay is going to release number one, the first one. He's going to release the second one, and he's going to release the third one. He loved all three mixes so much, he's going to put them all out. So you're all getting a release. Well, you're getting... that is big news. That is big news. So the three and his previous competition winners have all charted in Beatport. So uh, you'll have a chance to get a Beatport chart uh, from this. So brilliant. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much to Jerome for uh, releasing all three. Uh, and they'll get a prize from us as well. So I'll email the winners in the morning. So well done. Yeah, we should we should get in touch with previous winners and ask them how, it, how, how it's they, changed their life. How it changed their life. What, <laughs> you know, before you became super famous. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so I'm just going to do, let me just get a kick out. I might as well get a wee kick. Um, don't need that. Somebody's asking, are you paying PUBG? Uh, I do play a bit of PUBG, yeah. PUBG, is it not, PUBG? Not as, not as much PUBG. Right. Um, I did play it for quite a bit, and then I've been playing a bit of uh, the Warzone, Call of Duty Warzone, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Battle Royale. You've got an Xbox now as well, Chris. I do have an Xbox now. Thank, courtesy of you, thankfully. You, when, when lockdown happened, you said, come down and get an uh, Ableton push on an Xbox. So I've got a little gaming rig set up uh, and play to my heart's content. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to build a very simple Wii track. Um, uh, what, kick, what kick will we use? Go, to, go for something of my own kicks. Let's go for one of the prog and trance kicks. Tidus is saying he's literally playing Warzone right now. So you're, you're actually playing games while watching us. FIFA, Ejeka wants to know. FIFA, he is obsessed with FIFA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big so, time FIFA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so. used to play. <laughs> I used to play for the Northern Ireland Pro Clubs team. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Is that I played in the World Cup. <laughs> I played the FIFA World Cup. I, do you know what I've become? I, I've been becoming a little bit obsessed about watching official uh, Gran Turismo and, you know, uh, iRacing games, virtual racing now. I don't know why. I've just become really into it. And watching them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like the, watching... the Formula One one was amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's where it started from. Crashing <laughs> into each other and stuff. It's a pretty, I'm just going, this is just as good as, as Formula One and costs millions less. It's, it's kind of good. Okay, so I'm just going to... I'm going to combine two things. Was One person was asking about the Techno Pack in... Yes. 
um, and what to do with stuff. So I'm going to show you a bit about that. Pick a base. Always pick oh, a base. so this this is kind of like a, a walkthrough of, of how to piece together the techno pack and I'm use it. I'm going to piece together a wee bit of techno pack stuff to make a bit of a track, and then I'm going to show the sort of dub delay type thing. Um, okay. So, so a lot of the um, bases in the techno pack have arps in them. Cool. Get a bit more here. Make sure I don't get too loud now. Okay, somewhere around there. I'll throw that in. So, because an arp, you can just put it in, draw a line across. Play. A jacket. His crispy bacon preset. Yes, he he really he, he mentioned this last week. He wants you to play crispy bacon preset. Yeah, crispy bacon. <laughs> if you don't know the track crispy bacon, it was by uh, that, God. Li that preset. Literally took me about a month to figure out. How to make. <laughs> I think that's Anna One, is it not? I don't think did we do it. For oh, Anna? is it Anna? I think it was I, Anna One. I know, oh, it probably is Anna One actually. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right. Right, sorry, it is Anna One. Yeah, I spent a long time on that preset. Um. <laughs> What do you call the DJ? French guy? Uh... Laurent Garnier? Yeah, that's the one. Laurent Garnier. Yeah. That's an absolutely awesome track. Um, so, yeah, I'll go through some of the... So once you get your sort of bass in, uh, we did a bunch of... Um, like... Nice few plucky things. Yeah. So you can just copy over your MIDI from the bass because it's all using ARPs. We're, we can just use single notes. You can just transpose them up. You can jam through some different sounds. I love that one. Cavern, I think it was. So, guy, while Phil's working away there, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please hit the uh, the like button and hit the alarm bell so you will get notifications when we are going live each week. Each week we're live at 8 p.m. BST now. Uh, so, uh, don't forget the clocks have moved an hour forward, so don't miss out on that. So, yes, yeah, subscribe to the channel. Uh, um, yeah, so I'm gonna I've got a delay in. I'm yeah. gonna try and do it with just Ableton's delay, but I suspect uh, one of the things that the dub delay kind of need is some sort of distortion in the feedback chain. Yeah, because Logic I'd always use the tape delay, so you get yeah, that so I'll, sort I'll of. I'll do it with the Ableton de de delay and see if it works, and then I'll do it yeah. with the uh, dub delay. And you can actually set up. I don't know. I don't know if I've got a controller to do it, but you can set up <clears> a macro <throat> system so you can um, do some interesting stuff. So. Um, Let's send that to our delay for a second. Yeah, it only gives you 95% feedback there. Can't really get it into, into the, the, the real mode. dirty. Yeah, the real. Well, you're not. You're not too not far too off. Far off. Um, so, so what would you try each each delay? I'll know this works. So waves each delay. Frequently, you'll find this on sale for twenty nine quid. Definitely worth yes. picking up. It has a really nice vibe to it. And hopefully, uh, what what month are we in now? April. Oh, in 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 June, we have a, a nice waves uh, announcement to make. Uh, where hopefully we're going to give you a free plugin. All cool things happening in Sonic Academy, Phil. Yeah, there you go. Back in! 
So that was basically it. Just um, one of our users said he didn't know how to get it or couldn't get the delays working. So I think you need a a delay that has analog vibes. Yeah, you got to have that sort of tapey yeah, vibe. Yeah, tapey to delay, it. and you need a feedback that goes beyond a hundred. Yeah. Well, do you? Or cl very close to? Yeah. Yeah. You no. want the, for the no? No, because in Logic's tape delay, I get to fifty six. At fifty six percent is the magic number. Oh really? I can hear you. Yours is coming back now. Yours is coming okay. back. You got it. That it's gonna stop. Yep. 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 Sample it. T totally. That's what I was just about to say. Is literally <laughs> not record that. Because and and then side chain that. That's all the yep. cool. That's all the cool little uh, incidentals from that previous track. All that sort of stuff is brilliant. Sort of get delays and big reverb tails. Sample those. Re reverse them. Chop them up. Uh, do do audio accidents you know that's that's where all those really cool incidental sounds go to uh yep yep uh anything else i think that's it you think that's it tonight i think that's uh, it yeah tonight. we've we've been off for an hour and an hour over an hour uh guys thank you so much again for joining us uh we know that there is a million djs uh, out there uh, broadcasting simultaneously at the moment uh, and we're all fighting for your attention uh, so thank you so much for joining us to uh Kava Kava, Ejeka, Mar Technique, Ron Moore, uh, Kenny D, that was your technique we got there. To Deadly Custard, thank you for joining us. Simply Joseph, uh, David Bushaka, I think, and Mr. Jim Mix, Arts, Cure, Rock and Roll. There you go. He loves H Delay. So, guys, thank you very much for joining us. As always, if you have any questions, tips, ideas, you want things to cover on the show, we yep. are more than happy. You can just email us at live at Sonic Academy. So, email us <coughs> demos. Um, and previously, we'd mentioned in the newsletter that um, YouTube demos, we don't want them in YouTube. We want them either emailed a direct link, uh, Google, um, Google Drive link, Dropbox link. We transfer, whatever, or, or just direct email. So or SoundCloud. <coughs> a couple of things. If you are sending SoundCloud, remember to enable downloads. <coughs> yeah, because we do have to regularly email people going, "Can you enable that for download?" And go, okay, yeah, sorry. And if you want any tips, if you want any techniques, if you want yes. to cover anything at all, we're happy to look. And if you want your track um on fix my fix my, fix mix. my mix, then yep. you can either just send the project, the full project to us, and we'll have a look at it and see if we can load it. Preferably in Ableton, because that's what I work in mainly, and preferably with mostly stock plugins, or we've put a list up before somewhere. Yeah. Maybe put that up again. Um, yeah. So. Uh, what's happening? What's happening on Sonic Academy side at the moment? Well, you know, we have got a seven-day free trial. We have got thirty percent off our annual subscriptions. We've got sixty-five percent off Anna two. Uh, we have got what else have we got? Was something else? Oh, we've got a new remix competition coming tomorrow. That is with uh, the biggest uh, synthwave label. If you go onto YouTube channel and look for new retrowave, their their channel has. <clears throat> I think they've just hit. They're nearly hitting a million subscribers. So it's a massive channel. So, so remix uh, comp is going <clears throat> to be released on their label. Yeah, the, the winning remix will get released on that. You get exposed to their uh, million subscriber YouTube channel, which is pretty bloody hu huge. We've got a guy, Michael Oakley, tomorrow. Uh, Brian's just posting the link to the seven day free trial. Sign up, seven days, fill your boots, go and uh, learn something, yep. go and check it's been out. Really something. super popular. I checked in the other day. There's subs a ton of people have signed in. Yep. So. Yep. So, uh, am I missing anything else? It seems like uh, Chris mentioned the sub subscribe thing while Phil's working away there. Okay. Can you subscribe to our YouTube channel? Can you hit the like button and can you hit the alarm bell so that when we're on next week, you will get a notification? And tell all your friends. Yes, get get more people involved. It's a lovely little community. It re I really look forward to Thursday nights, getting away from all the other bullshit okay. and, and doing this. So listen, thank you very much, guys, for watching. And we're going to play you out with the Synthwave promo. If I press the right button, did, did I press the right one last time? Uh, okay. You did. Yeah, but then work. you stopped it. All right. Guys, see you all later. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Michael Oakley, and this is my Start to Finish Synthwave course on Sonic Academy. In this course, I'm going to talk to you about how I personally approach making music and show you specific ways that I work which can definitely help you in your own music. We'll also take a look at my track Control and go step by step through the process of how I created it and look at all aspects of the composition, sound design, processing and structure. And also, we are running an exclusive remix competition where the winning remix will get a release on New Retro Wave 
as the B-side to my next single, which is coming out on May the 22nd. So if you enter, good luck. I'll be listening to every single remix and deciding the winner. Cause tomorrow's open wide High But you're falling like the rain Blinded by illusions 